You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. I'm super excited about today's guest. Ivan, please go ahead and get us started. Hi, I'm Ivan Zach, and I'm excited to introduce you guys to Anthony Chadwick. Uh, he literally invented webinar uh, environment in veterinary domain. I think we can say that. Uh, he holds a certificate of veterinary dermatology awarded by the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons in 1995. Anthony set up a practice in Liverpool in 1997, which he eventually sold in 2011 so that he could concentrate on the webinar vet which he started in January 2010. The webinar vet is the largest online provider of veterinary CPD in Europe. Anthony is also a veterinary futurist and is fascinated about new technology and veterinary profession. He's a CEO of the webinar vet, the CEO of Holo Vet. He holds a degree uh, in veterinary from the University of Liverpool and roots for Liverpool Football Club and is a big fan of their manager, Jürgen Klopp. Hey, great to see you both. It's crazy to think that what you started in 2010 is going to be a basically mainstream right now, and that's the only way we do it, uh, especially with uh, with the pandemic and everything else. But what was it like? What inspired you? How did you how did you just stumble upon the idea? And then also being certified as a dermatologist, you've spent so much time getting in that. Uh, field throughout your career and then just swap it and say, not doing that anymore. And I'm going to just do this. And then since 2011, I assume that's all you've been doing. So how, how did it all happen? It was interesting. I've always been fascinated by the internet. And I think it's really important, you know, as vets, we can be quite conservative and we don't look outside. We stare at our belly a bit. But I'd always been interested in looking at other things. As a child, my favorite question to my parents, to anybody who would sit long enough to listen to me was why. And uh, if they answered that question, I'd usually ask another why question. So I've always been very inquisitive. And so with that in mind, I went off to an internet conference. At that time, I just set up, as well as running my practice, a veterinary pharmacy. And so I thought this would be a good idea to go to a internet conference and learn about more things like Google ads and all that kind of stuff. And then during the conference, I met a guy uh, on the stage who was talking about webinars. And it was really a a light bulb moment for me. You know, why don't we do this? You know, I was an ordinary vet in practice. I I didn't own a a continuing education company. But I knew that it was very difficult for vets to keep up to date with their CE. The normal way would be at the end of an evening uh, surgery. You would jump in the car, drive 20, 30 miles to a local hotel take in an hour of CE, uh, have a fairly um, average buffet provided by the uh, the pharmaceutical firm or whoever was sponsoring it, and then you'd make your way home and it's midnight, you're knackered, shattered, and the next day you're back on the treadmill. So for me, it just seemed like this is a much easier way of doing things. There really was no online presence in 2010, so that's what I, I first went with. It's so amazing. And I want to just like rewind to that old model, which I think a lot of people will argue as much as we think it may go away, the conference model, it's it's going to fight to come back. So what's that going to look like? You know, I, I know that myself, I'm registered to go to VMX in June. And the one thing that I can't get out of the back of my mind is, is there going to be anybody there? I think it's really difficult at the moment, Sean, because a lot of the big corporates don't want to go to an event that might be a super spreader. So certainly from the UK perspective, I I don't think there's really going to be much happening in 2021, which means that webinars are the way forward. We've helped a lot of conferences go online this year because actually another thing we did in 2013 for the first time was run a virtual conference, which was an all weekend thing a number of streams of course everything was recorded so people could go back to it and a lot of conferences the old-fashioned way was you've got three streams you want to go and see two of them 
unless you've got that skill of bilocation, it's really difficult to do. The event isn't recorded. So there was a really sort of, you know, quite a conservative way of looking at things. It was trying to hold the information in rather than freely give it out. We have probably 90% of our vets and nurses don't spend money with us. They watch the free webinars we do for companies like Merck, uh, Royal Canin, Mars, you know, these bigger companies that want to be able to talk to an audience. And my vets and nurses trust that I'm going to bring good content in. So obviously we have the membership as well. But um, for me, it's it's very much, I think, conferencing will come back. But I, I hope it's in a new way, which is perhaps a bit more hybridized. We, we uh, helped the World Congress for Veterinary Dermatology go live in, in October. They were expecting about 1,500 delegates to end up going to Sydney in Australia. And instead, they ended up with 3,000 delegates from all over the world. It was translated into Chinese, into Spanish, into Portuguese, into Japanese. And that attitude, and I think the World Congress of Vet Derm are very innovative. They saw that, you know, as a dermatology group, they want to get the information out there because if the vets are better at dermatology, the animals get looked after better. And that's the reason, you know, I certainly became a vet because I wanted the animals under my care to get better care. And the way that that happens is you become better at your job, which to some degree is practice, but is also the training that you take on. And, you know, we have the best lecturers in the world and suddenly, you know, they can't travel, but we've been able to still hold that really important conference that only happens every four years. I've been going to it since 1996, and it was a huge thrill to be able to help it stay online and happen, you know, in 2020. That's fascinating. So, um, and, and I just wanted to kind of uh, talk a little bit about the, well, just probably mention that the fact that a lot of platforms that provide content for a fee they switch to the model, like a lot of universities, they provide almost all their lectures completely online, even before the COVID. What I've noticed is that the more people produce free content that you can engage with, the more that acted as a marketing tool for people to sign up for actual courses. And that's, I've seen that a lot through Harvard's, through, through Stanford, basically just pure lectures, fully available with no limitation, not like trial and end somewhere. And then they use it as a marketing tool. And that really invite a lot of people to take actual education in these, in these organizations. So that's, that's been very interesting to me. And, and it proves that also that marketing aspect of it, but as a business model, I just wanted to talk about the webinar, uh, that itself, you mentioned a couple, uh, business models there. So you're facilitating trainings for these large companies. So I assume that's one revenue stream. There is, there's subscription and you mentioned that as well. But for just in general, how that, uh, what was the initial idea and how that evolved as a business? Because we want to kind of take an angle of innovation as the webinar platform altogether as the business. So how that evolved, what is the major sort of revenue stream now and where do you see it going in the future? Part of the reason to do it was to help me do my own training. But of course, because I felt that pain and I was also a practicing vet, I understood the problem perhaps better than maybe some of the companies who were running courses but didn't really spend enough time chatting with clients. And I think, you know, the the importance of going back to clients, which we do on a regular basis, we do a an annual survey every year, but we chat to our clients regularly to find out what they want. So, so for me, it was also a really great way of promoting my dermatology service. And actually, in that first year or two, I actually got invited to the south of France speak at a big Royal Cannon event. I got invited out to Iceland, which if you've never been to before is fascinating and well worth a visit. And and so it helped me with my derm service, which I carried on till 2016. And then, you know, I have since that time just concentrated on, on webinar vets. But I think really what was clever was we managed to have the um, subscription service. So people understand that we have some excellent quality material that you have to pay a monthly amount for. But actually also the sponsorship has been really um, effective. I think it's, I'm very much into win, win, win. You know, the client wins as in 
Merck or, or Royal Cannon or, or Mars by getting a lot of people into a room. You know, the old fashioned way, if you had 30 or 40 vets in a room, it was a big meeting of an evening, obviously conferences, you know, several hundred people. But actually what happened was that they were suddenly getting several hundred of thousand people in a room, which was really powerful for them to leverage their message. The vets were getting free content. And from our side, we were actually getting paid to host this webinar. And actually, certainly in the early stages, these big companies were promoting us. And of course, as those people came to a webinar for the first time, and with this, the right permissions, we were able to then invite them to other webinars. So our, our community grew really without a huge amount of cost because we were leveraging off the back of the big companies, off the back of friends saying, gosh, there's this new thing called webinars. You should really get involved in it. And very much um, the best way of growing a company is through recommendation. And this is what we found happened. That's fantastic. That's just such a, a strategic sort of oversight, how you pushed your marketing as well as got the other companies to pay for it and then advanced in there. It sounded a little bit like luck to me. Oh, there's definitely luck involved. <laughs> <laughs> when you connect the dots backwards, it looks like all logic. So I'll, I'll buy it for that. So this is, this is all logical. You can and... sell him anything, Anthony. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, uh, I, I like calling it, it's, it's uh, milking and riding the cow at the same time. So. <laughs> So uh, let, let's shift gears a little bit. Holo Vet, what is that? What is this new initiative and what are you guys doing there? It's really interesting. And it, it's an example of something sometimes that doesn't come at the right time, but nevertheless is really fascinating. And I think it is something that uh, people are starting to look at, but I don't think anybody in the veterinary field is really smashing it yet. One of my mentors is a guy called Roger Hamilton. And in 2017, he was... At his conference, he demonstrated the uh, Microsoft HoloLens that I'm sure you're both aware of. And again, at the end of the conference, there was a group of us chatting and he asked what was the thing that, you know, had most sort of got your attention at the conference. And it was the HoloLens. And actually a guy then came over to me and said, oh, I'm involved in sort of gaming and things. I'd love to help you to produce a model. So we produced the first ever um, holographic German Shepherd dog called Sheba. We then went and worked with Microsoft for a week with Harper Adams, one of our agricultural universities, to create a 3D cow's udder, which we could dissect. And for me, again, it was, I'm very much into light bulb moments. I try and put myself out there going to see things that perhaps other vets are not looking at. And from there, it was quite obvious to me that this would be a fantastic tool to teach anatomy to vet students, but also as it develops, potentially even to help vets to, to improve their um, surgical skills and so on. Uh, and actually, again, I talk all the time about R&D in my company, and it doesn't stand for research and development. In, in my case, it means rip off and duplicate, because of course, all the stuff is out there. You know, the future is actually happening now. We are as a smaller profession, often behind what the medics are doing. And some of the fabulous stuff that you see the Cleveland Clinic doing um, in cardiology and in, in actual uh, modeling of the human body uh, to teach medical students, I think is something that we should be doing in the veterinary field. Applied for grants uh, from Innovate UK with University of Surrey and University of Harper Adams. And unfortunately, we didn't get that. And for various reasons, you know, I think something like this needs a, a lot of money to go into it. And I think there is a market there, but at the time, it wasn't the right thing for us to do. But um, I don't know if you saw the announcement recently of the Microsoft Mesh, which they're then bringing into using HoloLens 2. And fantastic happening right at the right time, although probably a bit too early, you can actually hollow port people into a room. So you actually see the person in the room and you can interact with them. So, you know, again, this links in with where we're going to go with conferencing. Some of the Microsoft stuff is already very, very cool. 
Yeah, I'm I'm totally there with you. I, me and Ivan, I, I called him. I thought I was going to be riveting, giving him great content for him to look at as a technologist. And he was ahead of me by about six months, which was the first time ever, I'll, I'll point out. But yeah, I called him because I had bought my children this Oculus Quest 2, which is a VR headset built by Facebook. And it has very similar features to the HoloLens where it can do augmented reality as well as virtual reality, yeah. and layer the two of them in there. And it blew my mind. You know, I, I think that that is the future. You know, there's there's yeah. elements of that virtual or augmented reality that can drive so many things forward. So it's interesting. So what are you going to do with that? Where is it going to go? I, I think this year we're going to try and go out and get some investment to take that forward and again, go back to some of our, our university people. But it's it really is fascinating. You, you're right. I've been around the vet schools. I, I take it to exhibitions and when you put a HoloLens on somebody's head and then they start seeing the dog or the or the udder, they are blown away by it. And in fact, we still get people asking, oh, how's the HoloLens stuff going on? How's the HoloVet thing going on? Which we've not made massive progress on, but it's definitely an area that I want to go back to. And in fact, I've just taken a little bit of a sideways step. Um, difficulty with a creator is we always have different uh, things going on. So we we also recently acquired Wikivet, which is like the veterinary encyclopedia uh, set up by vet, vet schools in, um, in the UK, which we've now trying to take forward for them. Also owning um, a small recruitment firm that we want to do some really cool, innovative things. And I think it's because I... I see us as being a, a sort of marketplace that we want to be able to meet not just the needs of training, but be able to look at other areas, you know, veterinary students, recruitment and so on. So I'm moving for the moment just into the recruitment side to try and bring some energy into there as well. So it sounds like it fair to say that you're a serial entrepreneur that has a hard time uh, having one project. <laughs> yeah, I've stuck with this project. I mean, to go back though, I think one of the reasons Webinar Vet has been successful is I have stuck with it and there's been the consistency of two or three webinars a week. So people know if they go back to the site, there will be new things on there as well. But I am really keen to look at the recruitment model, but also to work on the HoloLens as well, which uh, is a fascinating, fascinating tool. So recruiting is actually one area that, that I've been looking at a lot right now with startups that I'm looking at uh, from an investment and advisory point of view, because this is this is the problem now. We have too many pets. We don't have enough vets. And the yes. vets that are there, they're picky and they're millennials. So they they don't want to work for too long in one place and they want to be rewarded. And they're, as yeah. typical millennials, uh, narcissistic and uh, with a sense of entitlement. Tell, tell us what you really think about millennials. <laughs> I'm just interpreting the data from the psychological yeah. studies, but that's that's kind of how they're characterized. And that's I, I think that's a really good direction because now everybody's struggling, especially the groups. And in the UK, it's, you know, it's been over 60% now. So I'm sure that it's really difficult to hire veterinarians. So you keep referring to we, and uh, you're a very iconic person in the industry as a one person. Who are we behind? Where do people find all of you? And uh, and how do they keep up with what you're inventing and going into? And what's the what's the most interesting things that you want listeners from, from our show to look at and to find out what you're involved in? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was like seven yeah, questions. Yeah, that that's, that's a tough one, Ivan. That was a softball. You can yeah. put a plug to anything you do right now, you can advertise here. Well, it, that's what it was. It's really fascinating, Ivan. We One of the things I've been talking to people in the last year about is I say to them, we've been preparing for the pandemic for the last 11 years. We just didn't realize. Uh, so we, are, we have been a very pandemic-resistant business. In fact, we've grown massively in the last year so and not a huge team but over 30 of us in the UK but also some of our some of our team are abroad as well and I think it's the stuff for me is the fascination of where we can take webinars but also the new stuff so the HoloLens you know I think the next five years is going to be really fascinating from the recruitment side I think you're right it's our job as a recruitment firm to make sure we get the best vets into the best practices because I think 
what we need to work on is that everybody improves their quality, uh, makes it a good place to work. It shouldn't be a place that you go home crying from. You know, we have the best job in the world being a vet. There's nobody who, when you tell them the job you do and you say, I'm a vet, no other profession where they go, oh, that's just so lovely. You're a vet. And then, of course, they ask you about their dog scabs, which is, I don't mind talking about scabs. It's one of my favorite subjects. But um, we're very fortunate. And I think it's really sad that we are losing people to burnout. So I'm not suggesting we have all the answers for that. But I certainly want to be, you know, a part of that solution of keeping people in love with the profession. And if that means that they're not working quite as much, having a nimble system that manages to link vets and practices together because i think part of our problem is we're not using our manpower efficiently enough so we're trying to work on some of those solutions but making sure that people find a great practice and a practice finds a great vet that they can work with and and develop with Anthony, it's been such an absolute pleasure. I hate when these 20 minutes go by so quickly, um, but they're gone. So we like to end uh, every episode uh, the same way. So we've got two more questions for you. The first one is, you know, a guy that's been preparing for this pandemic for 11 years has to have occasionally stumbled upon something that's been inspiring or helped you in your career. Do you have any recommendations, whether it's a book, TED Talk, a YouTube video for our guests to check out? Yeah, sure. I read last year a brilliant book by the Google team called The Trillion Dollar Coach, all about Bill Campbell, Mm -hmm. who was the coach for, for Google and also worked with Apple and Facebook and he worked with everybody. And I think certainly as a leader, trying to lead a team. Um, That's been a really powerful book for me. The book I'm reading at the moment is by uh, Hans Rosling called Factfulness. I'm actually a real optimist about the world, about where we are, about the the sacrifice of, of the pandemic, but maybe the blessings in five years that we'll see from it. So it's been sacrificial, but there's actually a lot of really good stuff going on in the world. And the media, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, um, is not interested necessarily always in in good, you know, happy news. So uh, I would definitely recommend Factfulness and the, the Trillion Dollar Coach by the, the Google boys. That's, that's the next one actually on my list, The Trillion Dollar Coach. It really is an excellent book. I loved it. It was one of my favorites. I read it a couple of years back as well. And this second question we usually ask, do you know anybody in the industry that would be interesting to invite to this podcast? Well, I'm very fortunate. We've built up a board now of, um, we sort of were a content business and we wanted to become a tech business. And I think we have made that uh, jump in the last two or three years. Just recently, we took on a new member to our board, a guy called Ben Legg who is an ex-COO of Google. I'm a great believer in being the stupidest person in the room. That's how I learn things. So uh, Ben, I'm sure would be a, a great person for you to podcast with. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.